Hey, this is Jeff, and we need to talk about the Senate filibuster. I've seen a lot of memes about it recently, and a few referring to it as a Jim Crow relic, but it's actually been around since 1806. And it's true that Senator Strom Thurmond, a Democrat, by the way, infamously set the Senate record for longest filibuster while trying to block passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1957. But less than two hours after he shut up, it was passed in a mostly bipartisan landslide. 43 Republicans for, none against. 29 Democrats for, 18 against. And was signed into law a week later by President Eisenhower, a Republican, by the way. That said, as you can see from this chart, the filibuster was rarely used during the Civil Rights era, which is broadly defined as 1954 to 1968. Filibusters didn't start ballooning until the mid-70s. I find it interesting that that explosion was triggered by Republicans filibustering in the Democrat-controlled Senate, even though there was a Republican in the White House who could veto any bills Republicans opposed. Maybe they didn't trust Nixon because he was insane. The point is, there's been a filibuster arms race ever since. There have been a few terms when the minority filibustered a lot of bills even though their party held the White House, like the Nixon situation or the last two years of W's administration, when Democrats flipped the Senate and Republican senators suddenly realized maybe it wasn't that great having a president who was asleep at the wheel and would basically sign anything that crossed his desk. But unsurprisingly, any time one party controls both the Senate and the White House, the number of filibusters by the opposition party tends to rise. And just as predictably, the party in control always starts talking about eliminating the filibuster. It doesn't matter which party, they both do it. In fact, the high bar was just set by Democrats during the 116th Congress from 2019 to 2020, more than double the historical average since the 1980s, and 30% higher than the previous record set by Republicans of the 113th Congress from 2013 to 2014. As an aside, the House of Representatives has had a rule since 1937 which effectively prohibits filibustering by limiting speeches on the floor to a minute or less, but those rules don't apply to the top leaders of that chamber. Republican John Boehner broke with convention and used his position as minority leader to mount a quasi-filibuster by speaking for around an hour at a session in 2009. In 2018, Democrat Nancy Pelosi took advantage of the precedent set by Boehner to speak on the House floor for over eight hours, shattering both Boehner's post-1937 record and what is believed to be the previous all-time record of around five and a half hours set in 1909. All of which means we should eliminate the filibuster, right? Wrong. The ever-expanding use of the filibuster is a byproduct of the theatrical polarization of the two legacy parties. Of course, that polarization is largely cosmetic in the long run because it's part of a broader, collaborative, divide-and-conquer strategy. Each party picks a specific subset of our rights that they'll be in charge of trampling, sort of like a fantasy fascism draft, and then they take turns doing it. So, far from weakening or eliminating the filibuster, we should affirm and strengthen it to protect ourselves from authoritarian ideology on either side of the aisle. History is replete with atrocities initiated or enabled by a simple majority in Congress. If three-fifths of those oligarchs can't agree on a bill, then it doesn't need to be a law. But that's only a stopgap until we break the duopoly altogether and empower meaningful, multi-party representation in Congress. Go back and watch Episode 7 if you want to know more about that. Well, that's it for now. Feel free to like and share. And if you enjoy contrarian viewpoints when both mainstream sides of a debate seem misguided or misinformed, you can always subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again soon.